So opposite of Z transform is inverse Z transform. That is, if you have a time domain signal, you apply Z transform on that time domain signal, you go to the complex frequency Z domain. Uh, so for X of N, you go to X of Z. Now if you have frequency domain signal in Z domain, X of Z, and you wanna get your X of N back, then you apply inverse Z transform. And as I mentioned in the last video that uh, we will not be using any mathematical uh, derivation or formula to go from X of Z to X of N, Y of Z to Y of N. We will be just using the table, table 5-1, uh, to go from the X of Z, uh, basically from the Z domain to the N domain or the time domain. That's what you will be using. Now, one thing that you need to know, you must know, is how to perform partial fraction expansion of any partial uh, uh, fraction. So how to divide a partial fraction, how to decompose a partial fraction, you need to know that. Uh, we will not be doing it for every problem, we will be using MATLAB. I'm going to show you how to use MATLAB to do partial fraction decomposition or partial fraction expansion but in the exam or in the quiz it is possible that I will ask you show me the complete work including your partial fraction decomposition in that case you will have to show me your work to perform the partial fraction decomposition otherwise you're not gonna get points so keep that in mind please review your partial fraction decomposition I'm gonna go over three examples uh, and in each example, uh, I'm using uh, an example that gives you, uh, there are three different uh, type of fractions that you can, that you will see. And I'm, I'm giving you three examples that will use those three different types of fraction. So you will basically uh, do some practice using these examples, but do some more examples. Uh, go back when you learn partial fraction decomposition and then uh, refresh your memory. Uh, so the first example. You have this y of z, 10z over z minus 0 0.5 times z minus 0 0.8, and you want to uh, get y of n. So how do you, how do you uh, proceed? So whenever you have y of z, uh, given in terms of some fraction, the first thing that you do is to divide both sides by z. Or in other words, if you have any z over here, which is multiplying the, this fraction, bring that z on this side. So this is the first step you're going to do. So y of z over z. And you're going to perform the partial fraction expansion for y of z over z. Remember that. Okay, so what is left on this side? 10 over z minus 0 0.5 times z minus 0 0.8. So uh, I will divide this into two fractions. And um, this is the partial fraction. So a over z minus 0 0.5 divided by b over z minus 0 0.8. How I'm going to find a and b? It's very simple when you have real factors in the denominator or even when you have the complex factors in the denominator the way you find the numerator values is one by one take the denominator factor of one of the unknown let's say z minus 0 0.5 multiply both sides by this denominator factor multiply both sides mean multiply this equation right here and multiply this equation so multiply both sides by the factor of the unknown that you are trying to find. So when I multiply both sides by z minus 0 0.5, of course, I, I will have 10 over z minus 0 0.5, z minus 0 0.8. I'm going to multiply this by z minus 0 0.5. So this will be cancelled out. And then on the right hand side, of course, this z minus 5.5, if I multiply this a by z minus 0 0.5, this will be cancelled out. So I will have only a. And then b, z minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.8, z minus 0 0.8. And then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate both sides at the root of this factor. That is, what is the root of this factor? So how do you find root of a factor? z minus 0 0.5 equals 0. So root of the factor will be z is equal to 0 0.5. So you're going to evaluate at the root of the factor. So when you evaluate at the root of the factor, right here, that's going to be 10, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.8. That is negative 0 0.3. And then you're going to put z is equal to 0 0.5 here. So this whole factor is going to become 0. So what will be left? A will be left. 
and a will be 10 over negative 0 0.3 which is negative 33.33 similarly you will find b by multiplying both sides by the denominator of b z minus 0 0.8 and then evaluating at the root of that factor that is z is equal to 0 0.8 as it is shown here and uh, you will find b will be 10 over 0 0.3 33.33 so this is the easiest way if your factors are real if your root if, if the denominator has real and distinct factors distinct mean they are not repeating if your uh, if your denominator have a real and distinct factor then it is extremely easy to find the numerator values by performing the partial fraction decomposition like the the way i am showing you now once you have all these values you go ahead and you write y z over z is equal to 10 over this and then you write down a this was a and this was b and then you bring z back over here over here and over here so negative 33.33 z over z minus 0 0.5 33.33 z over z minus 0 0.8 now if you go back to table 5.1 and you and and see what is z over z minus 0 0.5 negative 33.33 is just a multiple so you will see that z over z minus 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5 to the power n from the table this is basically z over z minus a if a is less than 1 so that's going to be a to the power n whatever a is there if a is in this case z minus 0 0.5 z minus a so a is 0 0.5 if you have z plus 0 0.5 that means a will be negative 0 0.5 still you can apply the same formula instead of positive it's going to be negative 0 0.5 to the power n and likewise this is going to be 33.33 a to the power 0 0.8 and all this is u to the power uh, u n so it will start at n is equal to 0 use of like it is shown over so it will start at n is equal to 0 so this basically it is showing you that this output is a causal output it starts at u is a u n that is n is equal to 0 all right once again if I ask you show me the complete work make sure you show whatever I'm showing you over here the way I'm solving uh, pretty soon we're going to study MATLAB residue function which is used to perform partial fraction decomposition but if I ask you to show complete work do not use this function now uh, many time uh, we check the system characteristics including system stability in Z domain we can also see how if the system is stable or not stable in the time domain of course if this what is the criteria of stability or not the stability or non-stability basically if your system value keeps on increasing as time is increasing then your system is going to become unstable that is at n um, when n tends to infinity y n tends to infinity that's an unstable system but if your system value keeps on decreasing and at n tends to infinity either it's going to become a constant or it's going to become a zero that system is a stable system so in this case both 0.8 n and 0.5 n the values will keep on decreasing as n keeps on increasing so this system is a stable system another example in this example in the last example we had the um, real and distinct um, denominator when we had the partial fraction in this case i have this y sub c so first i'm going to do i'm going to find the roots of the denominator what are the uh, sorry factors of the denominator so to find the factors of the denominator you can use matlab function roots so roots basically give you roots of any polynomial so if i want to find the roots of this i will write down 1 1.4 1.4 0.5 and 0 
136. So this will give me these roots, not the factors, but it's going to give me roots. What are the roots of these factors? You have negative 0 0.4, you have negative 0 0.5 plus minus uh, j uh, 0 0.3. Right? So you have three roots because the power is z cube. So when you uh, use a roots function and use any coefficient of polynomial, any coefficient, uh, any polyno polynomial, uh, and enter that polynomial using the coefficient, and if some um, uh, some power of x has zero coefficient, for example, if x square is not present, you will still have to put the coefficient for x square by entering zero. You cannot just skip it. So you go from the highest coefficient, that is what is the highest power of z, coefficient of that, to the lowest, which is z to the power zero or constant. And if any one, uh, uh, any of the power of z is zero, that is, it is missing, the coefficient of that is going to be zero. In any case, so you have roots, it's gonna give you these values. So when you make factors, make sure subtract each root by z to make factor. So the first factor is z plus 0 0.4, the second factor is z plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3i, and the third factor is this. So now, uh, in the numerator, I have 2z squared plus 3z. So I take 1z common, so I have 2z, z plus 3. And I took that z on the other side because we're gonna make the partial fraction of yz, yz over z. So now I'm gonna uh, do the same thing what we did in example 5.3. Uh, I will distribute this as a over z plus 0 0.4, b over the second factor, and anytime you have a complex conjugate factors in the denominator, the numerator, corresponding numerator will also be complex conjugate. So you don't really need to find both of them. If you find one of them, the other will be just complex conjugate. And remember what is complex conjugate? a plus jb, if you have a complex number, then the conjugate of that will be a minus jb, right? In the rectangular form. In the polar form, if you have a complex number, let's say two angle 30 degrees, then the conjugate of this will simply be two angle negative 30 degrees, right? So the complex conjugate means that in the rectangular form, you change the sign of the imaginary portion, and in the polar form, you change the sign of the face. So we will find only B or, or you know, B conjugate, whatever you want, I'll just find only B in this one. So you do the same thing like we did uh, in the last one. Multiply both sides by the denominator of A, and then evaluate at the root of A, that is Z is equal to negative 0.4. So we did that, and when you do that, you're gonna find A is equal to 52. And to find B, again, multiply both sides by the denominator of B, and then evaluate at the root of that denominator. So the root is Z is equal to negative 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.3. Negative 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.3. So you multiply both sides by this, and then evaluate at this root, and then um, uh, B, A is gonna cancel out, uh, A is gonna become zero because the multiplying factor is gonna be zero. Uh, B conjugate is gonna become zero, only B will be left. And then B is going to be negative 26 plus J 5.33. And since we know B, we know B conjugate, negative 26 minus 5.33 J, right? Conjugate of that. So now you can put all these values here. You can bring your z back. I'm not showing you that step. I just brought my z back from left hand side. So 52z over this, this factor over this, and this factor over this. Now, the way you're gonna go from z domain to um, n domain or the time domain, you are going to take, you're going to convert this number into polar form. So when you convert this number into polar form, you're gonna get this. And likewise, you are going to convert this number. So uh, let me write this down. This is basically z minus 
negative 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3 right I'm writing down in terms of this is the factor this is the root and this is the factor I'm making from that root so I showed you plus over here because negative negative positive and then uh, my negative and positive is going to be negative so I just showed you the factor but if I want to write down in terms of root this is my root so basically this is my uh, what we call P in your book so you will take you will convert this rectangular form into polar form so that's going to be 0 0.5831 angle 149.04 the polar form of negative 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.3 all right so now you are going to use two um, two uh, relationships from table 5.1 the first relationship is the one that we've been using we we'll use in the last one z over z plus 0 0.4 that is 52 negative 0 0.4 to the power n and the second relationship let me just go back second relationship is relationship 15 right here so if you have a z over z minus p plus a conjugate z over z minus p conjugate then this is the time domain signal two times magnitude of a magnitude of a magnitude of p to the power n cosine of n theta where theta is the phase of the denominator plus phi phi is the phase of the numerator so basically what we are doing is go back to what I have okay so what we are doing is we just found out that's why we were trying to find the phase and magnitude that is the polar form of this num these numbers so where is it <coughs> right here so you are doing let me write down basically two times magnitude of the numerator so what is the magnitude of the numerator 26.541 so 26.541 times magnitude of the denominator 0 0.5831 to the power n cosine of angle of the denominator 149.04 149.04 degrees times n and plus magnitude of the numerator 168.41 168.41 and u sub n so that's going to be the z transform corresponding to or inverse z transform corresponding to this pair right here so you have basically z trans inverse z transform corresponding to this which is 52 times negative 0 0.4 to the power n and then, and then uh, inverse z transform corresponding to the uh, quadratic equation this this will give you quadratic equation the complex conjugate and that's going to be 53.082 which is the product of 2 times 26.541 times 0 0.5831 to the power n cosine 149.04 degrees n plus 168.41 so if any question is given uh, in which you have the complex conjugate roots uh, and uh, you are required to, sh to uh, find out y sub n make sure you basically follow this never give your result in complex form never ever give your result in complex form if you do that you're going to lose points so make sure if you have that you have to convert that back into the cosine signal by using the property number 50 or the relationship number 15 from the table and give the correct answer okay and the last type of partial fraction is when your roots are repeated so in this one you will see that your roots are repeated so input of uh, an LTI system is given by xn 3.330.7 n minus 0.4 n 
and its impulse response is given by hn 0.4 and un determine y n in closed form closed form means an equation uh, so we can use convolution between xn and hn in z domain to find y sub z first and then use the table do the inverse z transform and give y sub n so first we're gonna find the x of z of this and then h of z of this which is right here so x of z 3.33 0 0.7 n is z over z minus 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 n is z over z minus 0 0.4 and likewise 0 0.4 n is u n is z over z minus 0 0.4 so i multiplied these together and my final result is this right here z square over z minus 0 0.7 over z minus 0 0.4 so what you see over here is a repeated root z minus 0 0.4 square so first we're going to take one of the z and divide y sub z so y sub z over z is equal to z over z minus 0 0.7 and your repeated root z minus 0 0.4 square okay so once you have this basically this is how you write this a over z minus 0 0.7 b over z minus 0 0.4 that is one power c over z minus 0 0.4 square and if you have actually z minus cube if you have a cube power over here we don't have it but let's say you have cube then you also write d over z minus 0 0.4 cube and you can keep on going if you have more powers well since we don't really have uh, more power so we don't have to do this i'm going to go ahead and erase it that's not to confuse anyone. Okay. Uh, good. Okay. All right. So this is how you're going to write it. So you can find A and you can find C. That is the highest power of the repeated root. You can find the distinct root, the coefficient corresponding to the distinct denominator, and the coefficient corresponding to the highest power of the repeated uh, uh, factor by using the same method that we used in the last two examples that is multiply both sides by the denominator of a and evaluate at the root of the denominator that is at z is equal to 0 0.7 and using that you're going to get a is equal to 7.778 i will uh, recommend you uh, highly recommend you to do this don't just read it do it so you get practice and to find c you multiply both sides by z minus 0 0.4 square and evaluate at z is equal to 0 0.4 and you are going to get c negative 1.333 when you do that again do it you will see that now to find the single power of the factor z minus 0 0.4 you will still multiply both sides by the highest power of the factor z minus 0 0.4 but before you substitute the root on both side first you're going to take the derivative with respect to z on both sides so let's go and look at here so you multiply both side by z minus 0 0.4 square so when you do that, of course, on the left hand side, z minus 0 0.4 square will be cancelled out. This z minus 0 0.4 square will be cancelled out. So you will have z minus 0 0.4 square times a and z minus 0 0.4 square times b. And since you have a denominator, z minus 0 0.4, one power will be cancelled out. So you will have b times z minus 0 0.4. So let's go and see that. So you have z over z minus 0 0.7 a z minus 0 0.4 square over z minus 0 0.7 b times z minus 0 0.4 plus c now you take derivative of both sides with respect to z before you substitute z is equal to 0 0.4 so when you take that on the left hand side you so basically you are using the rule of uh, u and v so d over dz uh, u over v so division rule of derivative so you will have du v times du v times du minus u times dv 
over v square right this is what you're using du means du over dz dv over dz because you are taking the derivative with respect to dz so this is what you're going to apply on both sides and then you're going to go ahead and plug z is equal to 0 0.4 and what you will see that this since we have z minus 0 0.4 over here this factor is going to become 0 this factor is going to become 0 and since they are multiplying a a is going to become 0 basically this factor is going to all the whole thing is going to become 0 so a will be gone the only factor that will be left will be b of course when you take the derivative of c which is a constant with respect to z the result is going to be 0 so the only factor will be left on the right hand side will be p and on the left hand side is going to be this factor so you can simplify this uh, the numerator z will be cancelled out so you will have negative 0 0.7 over z minus 0 0.7 square and when you put z is equal to 0 0.4 you're going to get b is equal to negative 7.778 so you are going to go ahead and plug those in the numerator you're going to bring the z that was here you're going to bring it back on this side this z this z and this z and then you are the first two are straightforward that's 7.778 0 0.7 n and 0 0.4 n z over z minus 4 the third one 1.304 z over z minus 0 0.4 square so if you go back to the table and look at this one eighth again i did not highlight it because we don't really use it that much i i just created that example where i'm using it so n times a of n u n is a of z over z minus a squared so we're gonna use this one right here all right, so we have 7.778, uh, 1.334z over z minus 0 0.4. So our relationship is um, n, a to the power n, u, n, in time domain, correspond to frequency domain. Uh, what was that? a over z minus a square use of I believe this is it. Let me go back and double double check. A z over a z minus a square. Okay, so a z. Let's go back. A z or z minus a square. All right. So observe what do we have? 1.334 z over z minus 0 0.4. So a is missing in the numerator, which is 0 0.4. So what I'm I did here? I multiplied and divide by 0 0.4 so this becomes my constant 1.334 divided by 0 0.4 and then I have 0 0.4 z over z minus 0 0.4 square which is this right um, un is not here sorry un is on the other side so now my shape is the same as this so I can write down the inverse z transform as where is it right here 3.335 which is 1.334 over 0.4 n a n a is 0 0.4 a to the power n use of n. so this is how, how i wrote this down so these are three different types of partial fractions that you will see and again i want you to understand each one of them you need to know how to do partial fraction if i ask you to show me the work uh, in the next topic you will see how we will use MATLAB or Octave to perform the partial fraction decomposition.